the recording should have started now. I think it's in progress. Uh, I hope everyone hears uh, and sees uh, the shared page. Um, you can confirm to us in the chat if it's okay, if you see, if you can hear, um, and uh, if we are good to go for this session. Okay. First of all, we apologize for the happening with the time zones. It is true that EMEA has uh, switched, uh, at least Europe has switched to daylight saving time uh, this week. America did not. And uh, there was a sync, a bad sync in our platform, in our event platform. And uh, we apologize for those of you who had to wait in the waiting room uh, for another 40, 50 minutes or so until uh, we appeared to open the session and let you know that we will start soon. Uh, nothing was lost. Uh, those of you who cannot stay longer, you will have the recording. But uh, of course, all of you who can stay, uh, we would really love to have you live with us. Uh, it Wednesday will start at uh, 4 p.m. CET. I already mentioned in the chat, so if you look a bit ahead in the chat, uh, move a bit up, you will see the official starting hour. The official starting hour will be uh, 4 p.m. CT, uh, 20.30 p.m. IST, 11 a.m. EDT. So uh, you have there uh, the free time zones. And meanwhile, my colleague is right now trying to sort the platform problem. So if you on Wednesday, if you log in directly from the event, you will have no problem whatsoever to uh, have, uh, have it at the right hour in your calendar. Uh, there will there should be no such issues on Wednesday because uh, your calendar saved block will take you through the event link. Uh, okay, uh, because we are just starting the last week of this incredible program, I want to congratulate everyone who has been with us so far and it's uh, still here. Uh, all of us know that it was an amazing journey so far uh, for our trainers and mentors as well. A lot of learning, a lot of exchange, uh, a lot of people attending to the sessions, but priceless, priceless information nonetheless. Uh, we had a lot of engagement and questions from you, and for this we are really, really grateful. Uh, it feels like we are all learning and discovering together, and we really hope that uh, you will choose to finish this program and to move onwards to certification. Uh, and uh, before we move uh, onwards, I would just let you know how uh, that next step is going to go. Like uh, the step for you getting the verification test link and uh, if passing, uh, getting the uh, certification exam voucher. So uh, this week for the final session, we will prepare a form. Uh, we will first send it uh, to the email database of the first session where we had most of the attendees, but also to you in the wrap up email. Uh, so you will receive a form where you will be required to submit the form in case you want to move uh, forward to certification. This means that uh, if you uh, submit that form, you will have confirmed that by 15th of November, you will have completed the learning plan in Academy and you are willing to take the verification test exam. Uh, keep in mind that the verification test link will only be sent to those who have actually completed the learning plan in the Academy. Uh, we will have a cross-check with our academy team uh, and based on the account uh, you provide on your name in the form, uh, we will check with the academy account that the learning plan is completed. Uh, I know we had some uh, discussions about equivalations between the 2023.10 and 2022.10 versions. Those of you who had previously uh, uh, gone through the learning plan for Automation Explorer and the Associate Developer in Academy, and uh, we are trying to sort them out as fast as we can. And so far, it appears that we will have equivalation for all the courses in between the learning plans who share those courses in common. Uh, hopefully, by next Wednesday, we will have the decision as final from the Academy team. And there will be no such issue with those who have already completed those courses uh, so that you won't have to go through the whole 30 hours of learning again. Okay, uh, if there are any other program related questions, uh, you can watch the forum thread, you will receive most of this information in the wrap up email, you will also find it right here on the program page, so all the timeline and the thresholds for uh, the series are here in program timeline, so you will know exactly when is the next step and what to expect. Uh, and yeah, we will answer every other question we receive on forum gladly. Uh, but please check first uh, the wrap-up email you will get with all the information and uh, the program page. And for the program page, I will just share it again right now. 
So you all know this is like your core resource for the information related to the program and the steps. And because we are already a bit late today, maybe, uh, now I will switch to our first mentor today, uh, to our MVP Pradeep, who will be your first mentor for the session. And uh, let's go into communications mining. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Christina. Thanks for handing over to me. Uh, thanks, everyone, uh, for uh, waiting on the lobby for uh, such a long period. So without doing any delay, uh, let me share my screen. Can anyone please confirm? Is my screen is visible? Yes, it's visible. Ah, perfect. So, uh, thanks everyone. Uh, thanks again for uh, joining this particular uh, session in the part of uh, AA Associate Developer Series. So, this is the part of uh, seventh session we are going to take it. So, today uh, we are going to discuss about uh, one of the uh, product. The product name is called as a communication mining. So, let me... Uh, uh, introduce myself. Uh, this is Pradeep. So I am. I got two time uh, MVP award and working as a senior uh, consultant for the Wonderbots. Uh, Pranav, uh, you can introduce yourself. Uh, same here. Uh, I'm also two times UI for the MVP and working uh, as a senior consultant at Wonderbots. Yeah, that's great. So today we are uh, uh, without doing any delays, uh, just uh, starting the session because we have uh, spent much of time in the lobby itself. Uh, before uh, directly jumping into the communication mining, uh, just I want to showcase the high level of uh, architecture, uh, high level of uh, thing, uh, what kind of products we have and where we are using that particular products and uh, when we are going to use the communication mining. So in which phase of automation we are going to use it. So as we know, in uh, higher level, uh, we have three phases for uh, doing the automation. So one is the uh, discover, one is automate and uh, operate. So what we'll do in the uh, discover. So the discover phase is a kind of phase before uh, doing the development. So with directly uh, starting the development, we have to do much more of uh, discover, much more of investigation, much more of uh, POCs related to the process. Is it related to the... Uh, is it suitable for RPA or not, right? So these are the things uh, whichever the investigation will do uh, before uh, starting the project that particular scenarios will come under the discover. So even as a part of a UA path family, so we have a couple of products which we can uh, help us to do the discover phase. So there itself we have uh, one of the products. The product name is uh, called as a communication mining. So and uh, automate. So once you have discovered it, so, okay, this particular, uh, whichever the thing we have uh, done it in the discover phase, it is suitable to do the automation. Then what we'll do, uh, we'll do the automation using kind of a studio or a studio web or UA based automation or some kind of uh, using DU or uh, using some kind of a AI center. So using this, uh, we'll do the automation for it. So once the automation is done, so once the particular uh, development is done, uh, we'll do the operate like uh, running are doing some kind of orchestration, are doing some kind of a continuous testing. So this is how our entire uh, life cycle of uh, RPA will work in the three phases, uh, discover, automate and operate. So today uh, we are going to discuss about uh, discover phase uh, before going to the uh, automation itself, before going to the development itself. So how we can discover the process, so which is suitable for uh, communication mining. So this is the main agenda we are going to discuss about it today. So let me jump into the next slide. Yeah. So uh, today what I am going to discuss today, uh, we are, uh, our main agenda is uh, learning on communication mining, right? So this is an, uh, our product. So this is a UAPath product. So it will work in the discover phase, but before going into the uh, communication mining, I want to tell you something about the NLP. So NLPs we know. So we have used it uh, many NLPs in our uh, AA center. So we know, right, AA center is a kind of uh, product. We have it where we can uh, build, where we can use, where we can monitor the ML models, right? So there itself, we have a couple of models which is using the NLP. NLP means natural uh, language processing, right? So using this NLP, we have a couple of models. These models are uh, text classification, uh, named entity recognition, and sentiment analysis. As we know, these particular models were available in our AA center. Using these particular models, our communication mining was built. 
So combination of these three models, our communication mining was uh, built at. So if, before jumping directly into the communication mining, you should know some basic skills, uh, basic idea about the models, like how these particular models will work and what kind of uh, extraction will it do and what kind of output will it give. So if we combine these all of the models, so what we will get it as an output for the communication mining. So this is what uh, we are going to learn it uh, now. Yeah. So let me uh, tell you about the text classification here. Uh, so the text classification model, how this particular model will work. So if you are sending some kind of uh, text to our model. So based on the text, we can identify which type of a uh, text is it. So if you are sending the data about uh, some kind of uh, laptops or something, so we can decide it, right? So this is the text related to the uh, laptop. So if you are uh, telling about some kind of weather or something, so we can able to identify as a human will get to know, okay, if you are speaking about the weather, this is per particular city or something, right? So that's how we can do the text classification. Okay, this is cat, this is dog, this is some kind of animal. So we can do the classification there. So that's how the text classification will work. So the next thing is a named entity recognition. So for this one of the example, I want to give it. So whenever you are uh, going for a vacation, so we have to send a mail to our manager, right? Saying that uh, these are the dates I am going for the vacation and uh, I need an approval for it, right? So if from my under, if 10 employees are working, 10 employees will send the mail in the different format for the vacation. Some one person will send it in some other way. Some person will send it in some other way. But high level of agenda is having some kind of entities, right? So the dates and where they are going are some kind of what's the main pinpoints were there, right? So the pinpoints will be the entities for that particular mails. So one of the thing is a sick mail. So if you are going to send a mail, so what we'll do? I am getting a headache today. So I want to take a leave on these particular dates, right? So what all are the entities we need to capture from here? The employee name and employee ID number and uh, when he is going to take a sick leave and why he is going to take the sick leave. However, the way you are sending a mail, but these all are the pinpoints. These all are the entities we required to get some kind of idea about the mail, right? So this is come under the uh, named entity recognition. And the uh, uh, next model is uh, sentiment analysis. The sentiment analysis, we know, uh, this model will work uh, mainly uh, based on the feedbacks. So if you are running a restaurant, if you are running some kind of uh, any of the business, so if you are, you will get some kind of feedbacks, right? So based on the feedback, if you read that feedback, you will get to know is that particular uh, message which we got it is it uh, neutral or is it positive or is it negative or is it very negative or very uh, positive so we'll get some kind of idea right so this uh, model will help us to give some kind of uh, feedback on the data whichever the data will get it so if you combine these three models the text classification like identifying the text which category is that particular text is and a named entity recognition, uh, the, the, this model is called as a custom uh, NER. So using uh, entities, we can identify the content of that particular uh, data. And the sentiment analysis, so it can identify the uh, feedback. So is it a positive or negative? So or a neutral? So it will give some kind of uh, identification for that. So using a combination of these three models, our communication mining was built in. So we'll, we'll talk more about the communication mining, where we can use that and how we can use that. Uh, we'll, we'll go through the entire stuff in the next slides, but the high level of thing is based on these three models, our communication model was uh, built in. So let me check the uh, chart, so it's something. Yeah, it's not much necessary. Yeah, let me go to the next slide. See, uh, here, here I can showcase one of the uh, example uh, for uh, using the NER. So, yeah. So, here we can see a couple of uh, data here. So, the 
we as we discussed we have uh, three things right the the three models the the first model is uh, text classification and the next one is uh, nr and the next one is uh, sentiment analysis right so just read the data of this particular mail uh, you will get this but uh, based on this data we have categorized these three things right so the first one is uh, inferred uh, intent so these are the intent so this is happened based on the uh, text classification sorry yeah these things happen based on the text classification and it can able to extract couple of entities when you observe it the account number and the address line and the zip code so these particular entities are uh, required here from that particular data and you can see the sentiment of that particular data so is the tone of that particular mail is having some kind of frustrated way he sent a mail to us right so it can able to identify these three things using our uh, nlp so this is how uh, nlp will work i will showcase how this nlp will come into the picture of uh, communication mining and how we can use this communication mining in the real time and how we can integrate real time applications uh, with our communication mining so let me jumping into the next slide. Yeah. So uh, here, uh, basically, what our communication mining will do. So communication mining will read the free text. So whichever the way you will send it, so it will read the data and it will identify the intent of that particular message. If it can able to do some kind of a replay back to that particular intent, it can do that. But as we know, uh, now, now it, the trend is going on for the chart GPT, right? So when you see the chart GPT also doing the same. So if you send some kind of message, it will give some kind of replay, right? Or if you are asking something based on the prompt, it will give some kind of uh, response uh, from the chart GPT. But we have uh, much difference when you are uh, comparing with the chart GPT because uh, chart GPT is built based on the supervisor learning. Uh, supervisor learning means uh, if you are having the data of hysterical. So we need much more hysterical data to uh, build the model. So our chart, uh, the chart GPT is built based on the hysterical data. When you are working on the communication mining, it is unsupervised learning. It's not required much amount of hysterical data based on the free data itself it can able to identify based on our labeling so we have to do some kind of labeling but it's not required much as chart gpt is using the data as a hysterical one so that's the major difference we have it here uh, when we are comparing it to the uh, chart gpt and the communication uh, mining so the chart gpt will work on the uh, supervisor learning and the communication mining will work on the uh, unsupervised learning so as we know, uh, so each message counts when you are working for any of the organization. Uh, if you are working for any of the ticketing uh, mechanism, so each message will count, right? So everyone will send a message in the different formats. So if someone wants to uh, get repair of his machine, he'll send a message, right? So that particular message, our communication mining should be able to understand it and it should be able to uh, give some kind of fix to that particular customer. So this is the high level of uh, expectation. We are expecting it from the communication mining. It's it's one kind of example, but we can integrate this particular uh, thing, this particular uh, integration with uh, Outlook. Uh, we can do it with the Salesforce. Uh, we can do it with the ServiceNow. Uh, we can do it with the Azure. So we can do it in with the multiple ways. Uh, and we'll get it connected with our communication mining and we can read the data and we can connect the data source to it and we can give some uh, response through the robot. So this is what uh, we can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so here, uh, when you are working for any of the uh, organization, so this is what happened. So as per the uh, survey, 48% of employees uh, time is spent managing emails and associated tasks. When they are working, 48% of time they are spending it on the emails and associated tasks. And uh, for the 30% of employees, it's a kind of distraction when they are working, if they are getting some kind of mail or some kind of message or some kind of notification regarding this particular free text, it's a kind of uh, biggest distraction 
from the real uh, real work and 78% uh, of companies are ex uh, expecting that particular uh, response back in within one hour so this is what happening in our real time so we have the solution for this so whenever you are getting the free text we can handle it with our communication mining and we can send the response back to them so that's what uh, we are uh, going to do it today yeah so uh, before directly jumping into the uh, communication mining how that communication mining will work here so just prano wants to, uh, prano will explain about how we can uh, show, how we can enable communication mining in our automation suit and uh, how that particular architecture will uh, get work in uh, architecture will get uh, work for the communication mining uh, please uh, prano you can proceed now hey thanks pradeep uh, let me share my screen yes let me stop sharing of mine uh, yes you can do that uh, can you please confirm if you are able to uh, yes i can yeah okay fine thanks for confirming so hi everyone so basically what i will be demonstrating here is how you can enable communication mining from your uipath orchestrator and then i will be taking you to the communication mining high level architecture okay so everyone uh, might be seeing my screen and you must be seeing that i am on my cloud uh, where i am present with all my uipath products the next big question comes how to enable uipath communication mining i was keep i was checking the uh, chat and i was getting that can we enable communication mining for in, uh, for community users so the first answer for this question is no you can't so communication mining is available free but not for the community users but for the enterprise users for free trial for 60 days so if you are using your personal like gmail or any other thing then definitely you won't be able to see and that this is what i will be demonstrating now and same thing will be applicable if you are using an enterprise id definitely the 60 days trial will you will be able to work with the communication mining okay with these things let me uh, show you how you can enable communication mining so as you can see my screen you can see there are many icons on the left side. The first thing that you have to click is the admin section. So just click on this admin section. Once you click on the admin section, you can see that there is something called default tenant will be there for or any tenant uh, will be there for you. So just click on that tenant. Okay. Once, once you have clicked on that default tenant, you can see there is something called services. So I will be clicking on this services. Okay. And now once I click on the services, I can see on my stream right top that there is something called add services is there. So what is this add services? So this is a place where whichever products of UI path from the cloud if you want to enable it, you have to follow the same process for each products. So I'll click on this add services. And now, as I mentioned, this place is for every services or every products of UiPath that we can seamlessly connect with our UiPath orchestrator. And as, as I already mentioned that I am using a community ID. So as I already informed you that if you are using an enterprise, definitely you will be able to see communication mining. So for example, if I am a community user, I would definitely get a uh, communication mining section and I have to just click on that and then click on add. So once you do it automatically, that communication mining will be added and how you are able to see these kind of icons, you will be able to see something like UiPath communication mining. Since I haven't shown you for the enterprise one, so I have one very good document prepared for each one of you. So those who want, especially from the admin perspective, those who want to use it, will be happy to share this document with you for your future references. You can definitely go with the same approach that I have just mentioned. Only thing will be the difference in the access. Okay. I hope this particular will make sense to each one of you. Just we, we will share this slide and it will be 
so easy for you to get it. Okay. I hope uh, the unable part, enablement part is clear to everyone. Now with this, I will be moving to the communication mining architecture where I'd be explaining the high level view of how communication mining architecture looks like and what to think uh, for the communication mining architecture. Okay. So as uh, Pradeep beautifully explained what communication mining he told about NLP and he told about things why we need communication mining. So just reiterating what he has mentioned here is communication mining turns every messages and when I tell messages it can be uh, data from your email, data from your team, Slack, any, anything wherever you are working, where you have unstructured data and you want to make that unstructured data into actionable data in real time, this is where communication mining helps you. It just, uh, we have the fine tune uh, and uh, custom machine learning models to extract that business specific from that unstructured data to make a meaningful, uh, meaningful impact on our communication mining whole process. So there are two deployment models that we have and we are using in communication mining. We are also call it comms mining. So the first one is multi-tenant software as a service. And the second one is single tenant. As the name suggests, single tenant is a place where you will have the access yourself and you will have the complete authority to do anything in their host. Whereas multi-tenant is basically, it will be shared by multiple people. And just to give a real life example, this is mostly if you have a land and if you are a individual uh, house, then you can think like at a, uh, it as a single tenant. Whereas the same land where you, uh, where you have built apartments that will be shared by different, different uh, apartment people but they, they will also have independent there. It's not like they, they will be shared or something, but they will be sharing the same land. So this is how this concept of multi-tenant and single tenant works uh, in a very high level. Okay. Now I'll be giving one minute pause if uh, I need to see if... Okay, I think we are good here. Fine. Now, there are many components and flow for comms mining. First thing is how the first big question that we must be asking ourselves uh, that how are we connecting every data source? For example, if I'm talking emails, Teams, Slack, or so any data source that, that we, whatever we are dealing with, how to connect with this? We have so much of integration integrated with all of this native integrations to Microsoft Exchange, Salesforce, or anything can be done using UiPath integration services. So that is available to us. Apart from this, we have specialized AI, which can extract semantics, which Pradeep was mentioning uh, how to extract the data and all those things. Automatically, these things are done with that tool. Then we have unsupervised learning model to identify common intents and constantly search for new ones. So as uh, this, this particular product is mostly dealing with machine learning parts so of supervised learning, unsupervised learning, where you need data to help the bot to understand, okay, what needs to be done. And then once the bot understand, once you have fed the data now, based on the data fed, the output will be generated based on the previous data. That and that can help to take more informed decisions. So those comes under the unsupervised learning models. We have active learning engines and interface to train customer specific supervised models. Then whatever you do, you will get a real time statics for analytics and insights and also real time model validation, model life cycle management with end to end automation will be there in this particular tool. Now, if I have to explain this particular section, which you can see on my middle screen, you can see here we have something called UiPath Automation Cloud. So what is UiPath Automation Cloud? Everyone knows this, this is what we call the where we have orchestrator and where 
we are managing all the robots where we are scheduling everything is done in the orchestrator on the same platform we have other other products for example document understanding to read again unstructured data of any pdf and make uh, insight from that document understanding is there and apart from this there are multiple products we have also something called uipath ai trust layer and what is uipath ai trust layer this is basically to make sure the ai reliability is there and whatever we are fetching from anywhere for example if we are connecting to azure or open uh, chat gpt something make sure the data point of view uh, whatever we are extracting is correct and all those things can be done using this uipath ai trust layer the, the kind of reliability it provides is immense now moving to my right side where you can see there is something called integration services studio so what is the use of this as everyone knows integration services where you can integrate with any kind of application and fetch the data from there and we have multiple applications available in the integration service which help us to make our life much easier for example if you want to extract data from any gmail outlook team slack anywhere you just connect to this integration services and take the data from there similarly if you are working in studio and if you are creating some data if you are uh, if you have some variables that you want to pass it definitely that can also be linked so as you can see the line that you can take data either from integration service or studio and you can take this data directly into the uipath comms mining now once you are there in the uipath comms mining you have multiple stages multiple steps to do and the first step that you have to do is called data ingestion services so what is data ingestion services so this is where this is a place where once you click on your project then you have to mention from where you have to bring the data that we are talking about the unstructured data that we are keep on telling that we can we have to read data from multiple sources so this is the place where you will mention all those things i want data from my email i want data from my uh, this application i want data from this application so this ingestion services helps you to ingest the data into the application so this place helps you to ingest it next as the name suggests next process is data processing services so what is this as the name suggests processing so it will help you to clean up processed clean and make sure the data that you have get because you will get a lot of data and not every data you need in your product so this place will make sure you clean the data and make sure whatever you needed you you have this for example the insurance uh, email that you might have seen that you might have received or the example that he was telling the uh, pradeep was telling that uh, your manager you want to apply for leave 10 people are sending you a uh, application that i won't leave on this 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 you might be sharing other mails to your manager as well so those things you don't need it because ingestion will help to get all the data data processing will help you to make sure you get only the leaves data here okay i hope i am clear till here any questions let me see if i am okay now now you have the data now you have cleansed the data now there is something called embedding services now with the use of ai now with the use of what you actually want from the data what kind of columns fields that you will send to the application so that you get the desired result in the same format for example what how the comms mining understand it so this is called embedding service where you will send the data to comms mining so that now it start working on your data so this is a place where the cleans data based on the format that comms mining accept you will be sending and there we will use ai models tech all those things will come here in this embedding services now 
once we have embedded the services, what next? Now, then since comms mining is more on machine learning, we have to keep on training the services so that we get the desired result. We have to keep on checking it, whether the result that we get it is correct or not. So if we are not, then again, we have to go back, fed more data so that we get the desired expected result. And we and here we will also see the ML prediction services like uh, prediction scores, what comes next. Uh, all those things can be done in the comms mining. Another part, data integration, active learning, that tool itself, once you provide it automatically, it will start learning and give you more insights based on what you have fed it. You will have, have a very beautiful dashboards where you can see what is happening, what's going on, and then prediction consumption, what will happen and all those things. Now, this is what the basic high level architecture of comms mining. Now, if you see here, we on the extreme right side, we have uh, different, different skills that is needed for comms mining. You can, we definitely need a model trainer who will be there to help the model to train business analyst to understand the business from where, what we need, how we need. Developers are needed if you're working with studio or anything on BU, orchestrator and all. And similarly, if you are needing, uh, if you need data from any API, then API users should be there. So this is all about the high level architecture of comms mining. Now I'll hand over to Pradeep uh, to take the next part. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much uh, Pranav for uh, explaining the architecture. So here, from here, I want to take uh, two points. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Prano, can you please confirm it? Uh, yes, Pradeep, I can see as well. Yeah. So here I want to take uh, one more point. So as we discussed earlier, so this particular communication mining in the part of uh, discover phase, but when we see it in the uh, architecture, we can see that particular communication mining uh, will be available in the discover phase and uh, will be available in the uh, automate phase why because uh, as we know so what's the communication mining it's a kind of a model so we are going to build it based on our data so it can uh, able to inject the data uh, based on that it can do the segregation of data and it can identify the entities and it can give the replace to that right so in the discover phase what it will do so it will identify the scope will that particular uh, free text of the quantity of uh, like how many categories we have it. Can we apply the communication mining to it or not? So is it feasible to do it or not? Or it will suitable or not? So it can give some kind of a criteria and it will check for that in the discover phase. So we got uh, some kind of a criteria and it matched. And if you want to use the communication mining for that particular process, so what we have to do, we have to use that particular model with the combination of our UEFA studio, we can use our queues, UEFA orchestrator queues, and we have a couple of uh, uh, marketplace activities uh, to get the data from communication mining to UEFA studio. Because once we get the data, we have to do it something, right? So we have to uh, send that particular data to the third party applications, or we have to uh, replay back to that particular uh, SAP application or CRM application or some kind of uh, any of the application, the third party application should be involved here using our uh, bots. So the communication mining uh, model is a kind of brain. It knows what to do, but to do something, we have to integrate with our uh, studio in our uh, uh, automate, automate phase. Then we have to uh, do the club of both. Uh, I think this particular uh, thing is clear. So why it is in both uh, phases. And the next one is uh, when you see the architecture here, uh, you can see uh, UEFA trust layer. So that's the major part uh, we have to discuss about it here. So what is the AA trust layer is? So the AA trust layer, so as we know, we are building the models, right? So as per if you are working for, if you are owner of any of the company, so if you want to use the communication mining, so you have to build a model based on your data, 
right so if you are building the model based on your data so where that particular data will go so do you have any proof that particular uh, data will use for any other models like outside of your, your organization and when you are going to send the messages to that particular uh, flow so you may send some kind of sensitive uh, kind some kind of uh, sensitive data right your uh, employee details or your employee salary details or your company personal details you may get it in that particular rough free text right so who is the responsible for uh, not sharing that data to the outside or uh, I'll, I'll give you one small example. So if I ask the chart GPT, who is the captain of India? Means it will give some kind of uh, answer. Uh, it, we don't know, will it be for cricket or will it be for football or will it be for some other sport or something, right? But if you are working for only for your company data, if you ask who is the CEO of your company, it will give our particular name, who is our CEO, right? So the the dealing with the bunch of data which is handling only for our company so that's these all are the things like uh, trust control and the transparency and when you compare with the uh, sensitive data and when you are uh, dealing with the context grounding so these all are the features we need to work on it right when you are dealing with the model so these all are the features we'll get it in the ua path a trust layer so if you are working on any of the third party integrations or if you are working on any of the uh, generative AI models in our communication mining, at that time we have to enable the AI, UI path AI trust layer to avoid these particular uh, consequences. So this is what uh, the AI, UI path AI trust layer will uh, have a major impact on uh, generative AI related stuff. So I hope uh, everyone is clear. Uh, let me go to the chart if we are having any of the questions or not. I think no, uh, Prano can handle these things. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So now uh, we are in the picture of uh, communication mining. So we are uh, moved to the communication mining now. So we got an idea now. So what can be handled it in the communication mining and what communication mining can do that and how the architecture of communication mining and what are the features we have in the communication mining. We got a bit clear idea about it, but uh, when you go to the real time, when you are applying it in our uh, uh, product, we'll get more idea about it. So here is the uh, state forward thing. So what communication mining will do. So the communication mining will uh, understand the data and it will extract the values from the uh, free text. Like it will extract the entities from the free text. And using this particular communication mining, we can do two things. Uh, we can do analytics and we can do automation. So wherever you want to use our communication mining, so that's up to the business and we can use it in these two ways. One is uh, analytics and one is automation. For analytics purpose, few of the examples are like giving the feedback, uh, giving the kind of feeling uh, or uh, doing some categorization. So what human can do as having the intelligence, that's the thing our communication mining will do in the part of analytics, right? And the next one is automation. Automation means uh, whenever you get the values, the what using that particular analytics data, so what you can do that? You have the brain, so what you can do that? you can use the hands of communication mining and you can do the automation. So these both can be handled in the communication mining. So, but you can do it based on the uh, business. If you want to do it only the analytics or if you want to do it the automation or if you want to club both and if you want to do it uh, in our automations, you can do that. So this is the uh, high level of uh, uh, description for the communication mining. So here I can show you uh, one of the example where we can use our uh, document understanding or the communication mining uh, to the part of uh, use cases. So here uh, the communications understanding uh, data capture with analytics and reporting. So here we are doing uh, two things. Uh, one is uh, document understanding and uh, like one is uh, we, here we are doing the document understanding and our communication mining 
uh, to do the end to end process uh, let me show you here the first step so the connections uh, connections means the source data so as we know so wherever you are working on the rpa uh, we have two major things one is uh, source data uh, one is uh, target applications so where we are getting the data and where we are posting the data and what's happening between these particular data so like whichever the data we got it in the machine uh, readable format so once we got the data what we are doing with that particular data what kind of uh, injections we are doing it what kind of segregations we are doing it what kind of classifications we are doing it how we are converting the data into the post processing then how we are uh, using it into the target application so these uh, steps will have the major impact here so here when you coming into the uh, data source as a uh, input uh, data so we have multiple uh, connections uh, it may be the ms exchange uh, sfdc or rp integrations so rp integrations means it may be the service now or it may be the jira or it may be some kind of uh, salesforce or something or it may be any other third party uh, ticketing tools i can say so from you will get the data so okay once you get a data so what we are doing it we are applying our nlp using our communication mining uh, as uh, pranav told uh, when we are getting the mails uh, we'll get a mails in the bunch amount of mails but as a human we know which mail is for which category but it's the same we are going to applying it in the communication mining and we are uh, identifying which one is it right so this is what happening in the com uh, nlp and once you are able to do that uh, we can do uh, applying the business decision so each uh, business is having some kind of uh, post processing condition so we can do that whatever the things we can do it and as we know in the document understanding we have couple of steps like uh, taxonomy digitization classification extraction export so that's the same way we have couple of steps are available in the communication mining like uh, training reporting validation so these are the things we are going to cover it in the next slide so how will it work so once this all the processing is done inside the our uh, product so it may be the communication or it may be the uh, document understanding we are applying that particular data into the third party application the final target application the target application may be the kind of uh, auto response so whenever you getting the uh, data the free text we are going to give the auto response for it or some kind of entering the data into the crm applications erp applications or many more applications or just we are going to send a kind of reports or something or just we are keeping the data in the form of a document processing so these all are the things uh, we can do it but this is the high level of uh, way how we are going to use the document understanding and the communication mining with the help of uh, rpa so let me check the messages Ah uh, yes, uh, our communication mining will consume the AI units, so it will consume based on the uh, threads. So based on the each thread, it will get count of the uh, bundle, a count of the AI unit from our uh, bundle. So I'll check all the uh, questions at the end, and we'll discuss about it. Ah, uh, Pradeep, so, one yes, a question that is very common. You can definitely take this that everyone is asking about the security part that. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Apart from this UI path AI trust, can we bring our own model or any kind of things for the uh, customers for this extra security? Ah uh, yes, of course. So that's the reason we are working on the generative AI models. So we have implemented many use cases uh, with the help of uh, specialized AI and with the help of uh, generative AI, the combination of both. So one of the example I can give that. So we know. So if you are if you want to use uh, if you want to read a 10 page document from the 10 page document, you want to read one of the entity. So as we know, we have the specialized AI. So specialized AI means document understanding or AI center. So if you use this particular document understanding, and if you want to read that particular 10 days, 10 page document, and if you want to extract the data, so how much time will you take? It's, it's a kind of complex, I can say bit complex to use this particular, uh, scenario to the documentation but if you upload that particular document to the uh, chat gpt and if you prompt it uh, please give me the uh, this particular insurance number from this 10 page document means you will get the response in the seconds so which one will be the easy so for this particular scenario 
chargeivity is easy the chargeivity integration we are calling it as a generative ai but our question is when you are uploading the data when you are uploading that particular 10 page document to the chat gpt of our integration that particular data will be the same or not so that's the area we are using the ai trust layer so we can use this particular ai trust layer to all the third party uh, models which we can uh, get it from the out of box models or which we are going to build it using python 37 or 36 so we can use the ai trust layer I think this is the uh, this is clear. Thanks, Pradeep. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here uh, we have one of the question. Uh, we have one of the sample. Uh, just before directly jumping into the communication mining, so I am going to showcase one of the free text mail. So we are taking the data source as a uh, mail here. So this is the message we got it, and uh, based on this particular message, see how our communication mining created the clusters so this one is called as a cluster this particular mail will come under the policy and inside that policy we have amendment amendment and inside this particular cluster we have the address change so this is the first address and this is the second address right and one more uh, cluster is policy amendment and the name change so this is what so these are the clusters were created by our communication mining using our communication mining this is the source data we interpreted uh, we injected these particular data to the communication mining we segregated data we did the classification of the data we have done the cleaning of the data we got the data in this particular format what our customers and customers are expecting it right so using our intelligence using our bot intelligence of uh, models we have made it in this particular i'll show you how we can do that uh, these these are all the things in our uh, communication mining so yeah so this is one more example so when you are getting the same kind of uh, mail uh, with uh, quality of service so we have to uh, get some kind of uh, keys key insights here so it should be the uh, as soon as possible that's the reason it, it took it as urgent and the status update and this is a cluster uh, exception mismatch block this is a, a cluster so I'll, I'll explain you about what is a cluster here uh, when you are dealing with the communication mining and the confirmation and the ctm and this is a kind of uh, follow-up mail so this is how it got identified. So based on this particular keyword, we can send this particular mail to particular unit or we can move it, move this file to particular folder or something. We can do it in the target application. So yep, without doing any delay. So let me uh, show you how we can uh, use the communication mining so this is the high level of communication mining how this particular uh, communication mining will work so this is the source data source data uh, will get it in the different format so it may be in the format of uh, email server or it may be the part of a chart server or crm or cms any of these things so whichever the data will get it uh, we are taking the data as a source uh, as a data source or uh, some kind of uh, uh, some kind of input way so we are taking the data, we are ingesting it to the communication mining and we are storing it. Then we are doing the uh, applying. These all are the things we are implementing it in our communication mining itself. Our communication mining, as we know, it's built it based on the NLP. So it will do the parts and uh, it will do some kind of uh, cleaning inside it. It will apply the supervisor learning as per the supervisor learning. So whichever the data will get it. So it will identify as saying that uh, if you are sending a mail uh, saying that uh, hi team, uh, I need to uh, reinstall the uh, RAM in my machine because it's getting slow means based on the mail itself, we'll get, we, we can identify, okay, this mail is uh, related to the hardware and we got one more mail saying that uh, hi uh, team, uh, I need to install the Citrix environment in my machine to access the VM. So uh, at that time we got to know, okay, this. Uh, mail is regarding the software installation so the customer is required to install the citrix to do the project okay it's software and one more mail is related to the uh, vacation so i'm planning to go for the vacation for these dates uh, please do approve so we can identify okay this mail is related to the hr stuff so 
which are the males we are getting it as a bunch we can do the segregation okay this male should go to this particular folder this male should go to this particular folder this male should go to this particular folder that's what we can do it in the unsupervised learning that's what our model can do that so if you are getting the mail regarding the invoice that particular thing will go to the invoice cluster purchase purchase related so purchase due date related stuff then due date cluster so that's how it will do that so once again able to do that we are doing the discover and train so these are the phases we have it in uh, communication mining discover train report analysis uh, validate and deploy so these are the phases as you know uh, document understanding how the stages we have it how the phases we have it uh, taxonomy uh, digitization classification extraction uh, validation then export so th that's the same way we have these phases uh, discover and train uh, report and analyze uh, validate and deploy so once these all other things are done so we can use the tar target application uh, to enter it uh, to give some kind of replay back or sending it to the mail or sending it to the any bpm application we are doing that so this is how uh, our uh, deployment overview will work for the communication mining so without doing uh, any delays regarding this theoretical part let me jump into our uh, communication mining uh, uh, studio so that uh, you will get some idea about it so let me go back let me open my yes so here i can uh, see uh, this is uapath uh, communication mining uh, dashboard so here uh, we can open our uh, communication mining so when you open the communication mining you can see the dashboard in this particular way pranav can you please confirm uh, can you able to see my communication mining or still in yeah. the ppt yes i can see your console yeah that's perfect so uh here is the communication mining so as we know the first part what we have to do it so today what we are going to showcase we are going to showcase the high level what we can do it in the communication mining and how we can build the model and which are the model you build it how we can uh, integrate that particular model uh, to the uapath studio and how you can call that so i can show you it in the high level so the first thing so the data set so the data set we know the data set will be in the different format right so that uh, data set can be the uh, before going to the data set i need to cover the data source first so let me yes so here is the new source so when you are adding the source we know uh, that the sources can be happen in the multiple ways so you can integrate your uh, outlook or you can integrate your uh, uh, crm applications or you can integrate your uh, salesforce or uh, service now applications with our communication mind this is the source okay so once the source is done so we have to see the data set right so the source where you will get the data uh, sorry someone is uh, moving the cursor on my screen Uh, give me one minute i think i can clear these uh, things yes yeah so here what we are going to do uh, we are going to discuss about that uh, source so the source may be in the different ways so we can integrate or we can read the data from the outlook because if you are integrating the outlook so you are not going to read the entire outlook right so inside the source we have the data set like which particular point we need to get a data so that's called as a data set so the high level thing the outlook or the integration will call as a uh, source or uh, that particular uh, pinpoint is called as a data set so let me uh, create one uh, data set here uh, let me create one source here source so if you are having any bucket like if you are having any storage buckets or something uh, so where the where you can where you want to store the data you can do that uh, here and we can do these things and we i created the source okay so now i created the source uh, now what we can uh, now we created the uh, source for that our uh, 
our thing. So then what we can do, we can do a data set. So the data set can be created in that way. Just we need to create and the data set. And if you want to, uh, how you want to add the data to our source. So if you are having the uh, API details of your uh, particular source machine, so it may be the Outlook or it may be the service now, or it may be any of the input uh, data from where we are getting that. So we have to provide these all are the details here. Then we need to click uh, next. So just let me give something here. Uh, test uh, data set. The project I am giving uh, this particular project and source the test source i am doing that then i am clicking on the next okay so now what we have done uh what we have done we have created the uh, data set uh, where we are getting the data and we have uh, connected to the source as of now as per the uh, real time we have not connected to anything just we have created because we don't have access uh, to connect the source but i am showing you how we can do that if you are uh, having the api key or if you are having the source then how we can do that so you can see here so when you are seeing the model recommendations nothing is showing why uh, nothing is showing because whichever the data source we have provided to the communication mining is not having any of this data so just I have created the project, but there is no real time data inside it. So if you are having the data, it will take a couple of minutes and it will uh, create a, some kind of recommendations for it. So what we can do. So I have one of the project where we have the data source and where we have the uh, data, data sets already clubbed for that particular project. Let me open that project and I will showcase uh, what's the things we can do it further once you have the data. So I am going to the dashboard page of uh, communication mining and I'll go with uh, one of the example uh, saying that uh, hotel reviews or something. So let me explore the project. So I explored this particular uh, project so we can get much uh, data here. So as we have seen it in the uh, PPT, let me reopen the PPT. So we have the phases discover uh, train. Uh, report analysis and validate deploy. So how these particular things uh, will uh, come here, we can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So let me go to the train. When you see it in the train, uh, we have the data using the data our model is in the face of average i can say one thing so when you are building the model uh, the biggest challenge what we can face is so as you are building the model you should know if the model is working or not so the next thing is if it is not working or if it is not working as we expected we should know where we need to improve the model to get it work as we expected right but if you are not, if you are building the model out of the communication mining in any of the platform, you won't get the recommendations to improve your model. Just we have to upload the uh, source and we have to rerun it or we have to run the pipelines and we have to do something. But this is a beautiful platform, I can say, in the communication mining. When you are uploading the data set based on our uh, model score, it will give you some kind of recommendations to you what are the recommendations is provided by the communication mining if you do that particular things your model score will get increased so that's what the recommendations will get it here so this is the uh, page uh, where you will get it uh, as a uh, train uh, train page you will get these other things so for uh, almost around 50000 of messages we have it and 34 uh, labels we have and uh, seven, uh, 728 messages are annotated and uh, just 1% of messages are annotated here. And this is the discover. So let me uh, tell you uh, about the clusters. So as, as we discussed in the previous slides, the cluster. So whenever you uploaded the test data of yours, the source data of yours, by default, our communication mining will generate 30 clusters for you 
30 clusters means as we have discussed earlier so if you are getting the mail regarding the laptop exchange so it's a kind of hardware request right so the hardware request is one kind of cluster so that's how it can identify 30 clusters for us so the first one so when you see only minor was that the mirror was slightly broken and right a little but it likely associated instead so this one uh, cluster and one more cluster let me open so these mails are one more clusters let me open the facilities see see these are the clusters were created by the uh, our communication mining so this is related to the free uh, hotel reviews so in the hotel reviews facilities air conditioning this cluster is regarding the ac and this is regarding the uh, bar this is regarding the lift spa swimming pool our uh, location our uh, road and the transport so these are the clusters these 30 clusters were created by our ua path communication mining by default right so that's how it will uh, get work so let me uh, showcase a uh, different type of clusters. So when you see uh, views of tower bridge were absent. So means we have to add the cluster means we can use this particular cluster, any of the cluster. So location, something we can say. we can give the cluster any of the cluster we can uh, give that okay property i can give uh, views of tower uh, bridge where i was on. so this is the uh, uh, this is the proper this is the cluster we are going with this particular uh, message so this is a kind of for doing the labeling for it so in the same way see uh, when you see all these particular messages are in the same way which is in the cluster three so i am going with a different way uh, bed too small, tiny room and uh, disabled traveler having to deal uh, with the state. So for this we can use uh, any of the uh, facilities lift. So this label we can add that. But if you want to create any of the label, so how you can uh, create a label for that. If you want to create a label, you can create a label also. So saying that uh, facilities Uh, then uh, we can uh, say TV. So inside the TV, uh, we can say uh, channels or something, or uh, we can say any kind of uh, interruption. Uh, we can say channel itself. Yeah. So this is one kind of uh, label I can say. See, so this is how uh, we can create a labels and we can add one more thing as saying that uh, uh, facilities uh bathroom and the smell so this is uh one more uh label so this is how we can create a label for it so whichever the label we have created so that can be applied to it so if you want to remove you can remove so based on the message uh based on the data whichever the data we got it uh from the source data we have to select the particular label for it so this is how we are doing the labeling of our input data so this is how we are identifying for which mail what kind of cluster will be suitable so that's what uh, we can do it here and with this we can see a couple of more things we can see the metadata also like whenever you get a mail so what kind of may uh, like when that mail got uploaded and what's the score for it and what's the reviewer score and uh, What's the name of that particular hotel? What's the question for it? So these kind of metadata also will get it. But this particular discover tab is used to do the labeling. So we have to do the labeling. So when you apply all this labeling, so when you do the apply, so your score will get high. So now what I'm going to do, uh, just doing the apply for here. So here you can see it's updating it. So you can see it's updating it and the version is two. So earlier we have one version. So this is a second version. And let me explore, go to the next tab, explore.
so in the explore you can see so which uh, kind of uh, mails you will get it uh, like uh, which one the recent one you will get it or if you want to get page based on the timestamps based on the filter based on the filter means based on the which color cluster you if you want to get it so based on that you can uh, able to identify and this one you know uh, these all are things are called as a taxonomy so uh, as when you are dealing with the source data we have one of the option one is option is uh, uh, adding the uh, bucket storage bucket and one more thing if you are having the taxonomy you can do that you can add the taxonomy also right so these all the fields from the taxonomy so when you see so regarding this particular we have a uh, lack of 238 and we are lack of uh, 1200 so these many samples we required to make this particular field as an accurate to our communication mining so if you label uh, more 1071 of uh, labels to this particular not the yeah so low, low number of uh, training examples so if you are applying the more labels based on the lift so your model will get uh, high uh, contents so these fields are coming under the taxonomy yeah so here uh, regarding the uh, recommendation so the recommendations will be done in the validation part so the recommendations will be in the part of uh, four categories uh, one is all labels and are underperforming labels and the balance and the coverage so based on these four categories uh, we can calculate our uh, score for our custom model so when you see the models okay we are excellent we got much more uh, labels here and underperforming labels so we have couple of uh, labels are not up to the mark like not having enough source data to do that and the balance and the coverage so this is how we have to do the model improvements for our model so these are the criteria so the first one is poor so when you go it so the similar to the unreviewed data so we have to review these all are the data then that our model score will get increased and underperforming labels so here you can see that particular recommendations what we have to do uh, the recommendations you can see right so basically our communication mining is a uh, low code platform uh, the no code platform what it will do it will teach us if you are uh, spending some time with our communication mining it will teach you how to build a model based on the recommendations itself whichever the things it is uh, telling just you have to follow that particular things and we have to see uh, how the score is moving so how the model is uh, improving the data type uh, improving the contents so the labels is uh, 90 per, uh, excellent so you no need to touch here so these are the recommendations if you want to make it uh, very high so that's how uh, the uh, recommendations we can give it here the next one is uh, reports the report means it's a kind of a beautiful dashboard i can say so whenever you are getting the mails as we discussed is it hr is it a software is it hardware and how many mails we are getting it uh, what's the count of the previous month what's the count of the previous one year uh, inside that particular uh, hr mails inside the uh, leaves how many mails are related to the uh, planned leaves how many mails are related to the uh, sick leaves when you are dealing with the vacation uh, facilities how many uh, are related to the hotel facilities how many are related to the spa facilities or bar uh, facilities so it can do the categorization and it can give the uh, report so we can we have different way of uh, representing it so you can see how many ways we can see the report so this is the tree map when you go to the property inside the property we have staff so if you click on the double click on the staff sorry it moved out so we have multiple things uh, this is inside the uh, property we have uh, staff breakfast bathroom cleanliness decor and a check-in carpet noise so this is how uh, it will get work so inside the location if you go to the location uh, other uh, these two things were available here so if you go under the facilities again bar spa tv air conditioning lift swimming pool wi-fi other so what i can say these are the clusters associated with the subclusters 
so we can get some kind of identification which clusters are getting more mails regarding that which cluster is having more uh, dependency on our communication mail so as uh, seeing this heat map we can say okay we are getting more uh, messages based on the property after that we are getting more messages based on the location that's how we can decide it so when you see the property and stuff we are getting these many messages as a positive and these many as a negative and these are the uh, reports we have it so this is how uh, we'll get some kind of a clear idea uh, so where we have to use our communication mining which cluster should be the major part to consider so like if you are uh, implementing the communication mining in your uh, uh, machine so which cluster will be the suitable for our communication mining based on the quantity based on the uh, messages we are getting it we can identify that and the next one uh, here you can see a couple of trends also so the trends it's entirely related to the dashboard so how many messages we are getting it so see from the first one year from the 2017 so based on the time uh, based on the date we can see some kind of our reports here and the comparison so this entire piece is uh, related to the uh, reports okay so the model uh, here we can see uh, the models uh, the model is the second version is it is so earlier we have created one model that is having the 40 47 percent of accurate but this is the one more version is having uh some kind of uh content so just we have uh, made it uh just a few few minutes back on october 28th uh, today itself just we have applied some kind of labels right so based on the recommendations so when you are using the recommendations when you are applying the recommendations in your model your model uh, version will get upgrade so based on that upgrade your confidence will get a confidence score will get increase so that's how our models will get work so as of now everything is good so as of now okay uh, we have discovered we have integrated our source data then we have uh, discovered we have explored the, what we have to do that we have seen the validations the recommendations okay based on the recommendations we got it okay these many things we have to do that based on the recommendations also uh, okay uh, our model score got increased and we got uh, reports for which cluster we need to implement the communication mining and we are finally able to see the models also in the communication mining but the last thing everything we have done it here but how we can integrate this particular communication mining with our uh, studio right that's the major part uh, everything you have done it here as a model creation and everything is done as per the test data as per the source data but how you can use these particular models inside our uipath studio so that's where coming into the picture of uh, streams so what we have to do the streams is a interface between communication mining to our uipath uh, queues orchestrator queues so when you create a stream here so what it will do so based on the api based on these all the details so what it will do it will make a interaction between the studio uh, uh, interaction between the orchestrator queues and our communication mining so we have a couple of uh, uh, marketplace uh, things the marketplace uh, activities uh, which can send a data to communication mining to the orchestrator queues using the stream so just you have to download the marketplace component from the marketplace and give your stream name whichever the stream you are going to mention it here and whichever the queue names we are providing it uh, to the orchestrator queue so uh, sorry so based on that what will happen whichever the free text will come here so that particular uh, free text will directly redirect redirect to your ua path queues there you can do the automation uh, there you can do the post processing based on the uh, data you can send that data to the uh, any of the third party applications or crm cpm applications are doing some kind of auto response to it so the, this is how uh, we can manage communication mining with the studio using the uh, streams for connecting the streams we have the marketplace component we have to create the stream here and we have to create the queues in our orchestrator then we have to do the sync up of uh, both so that's how uh, it will get work so 
let me go to the chart once Uh, can we use uh, Jira for communication mining? Yes, if you are having any kind of uh, integration, so, so which is accessible for the third party application from your company, uh, we can do that. So I think uh, uh, Pranav uh, uh, did a wonderful job here. So let me go back. Uh, so this is how our communication mining will work. So as of now, we have got a clear idea, right? So now what I am going to uh, showcase, I am going to showcase one of the uh, demo video. So where uh, you will get some clear idea about it. So how the communication mining will uh, work. So let me open the video and let me play. Just observe this particular video. You'll get some kind of a clear idea. So how will this uh, going to work? Organizations around the globe, yeah. small, small and big, share a similar challenge. They receive a massive amount of customer communications through channels such as email and chat that require quick and accurate responses. In this demo, we will be taking a look at a real customer scenario related to policy renewals at an insurance company. This process was completely manual before and took three days and spanned across multiple people in the business. With UiPath, the underwriters now have to process only exceptions while the robots automate the process. They reduce the time to process each request from three days to three hours, improving organizational efficiency and more importantly, improving customer experience. Now, let's see how UiPath are able to help customers achieve these results. As a business SME at a typical insurance company, I can see that communications mining has analyzed the historical data and extracted the intent and topic of the emails. I can understand what's driving the volumes and use this data to identify high volume and high impact processes to be automated in this mailbox. I can see a significant number of these processes are transactional by filtering for the email threads that have two emails or less. And I can see that the volume is being driven by policy related requests and more specifically policy renewal. Switching over to the trends view, I can filter to focus on policy renewal requests and I can see that we have a constant inbound of renewal requests and a peak of at least once a month. By double clicking on this data point, I can see the underlying messages that are driving these volumes. Here, I can see the predictions communications mining has made. Communications mining understands these emails are related to renewals and extracts relevant information with high confidence. For the purpose of automation, it's important to have complete transparency of model performance. Communications mining has detailed metrics and recommendations to improve the model. If I select renewals, we can tune how sensitive communications mining is to different concepts. And communications mining shows us how often we get the prediction right and how many emails will be left for manual processing. This label is performing well, so our client knew they could expect end-to-end -end automation for the vast majority of renewal requests they received. Now, let's watch the robot process several emails. The first email is a renewal request, and in the background, the robot extracts and validates the policy number and email address against the CRM, creates a renewal contract, and sends this contract to the customer. The robot has identified the next email as a quote and moves the email to the quote folder for the team to process. The next email is a renewal request. The robot goes through the same process as the initial renewal request that we saw, but the email address to the sender does not match the email in the CRM. So the robot has created a task for an underwriter to process. Let's take a look at that task. As an underwriter, I can immediately see that this is a request related to policy renewals. I can also see that communications mining extracted information like policy number and effective date. It seems that the robot has found the policy in the CRM, but the reason for an exception is an email ID mismatch. I can validate this information and have the robot generate and send the contract to the customer. 
Once the task is submitted, the robot creates the renewal contract and sends it via email. The robot moves to the next email, and this email is classified as a claim. The robot downloads the attachment and uses UiPath document understanding and Forms AI to extract the relevant information from the claim attachment. And now there is a task created for an underwriter to validate the extracted information from the document. Let's take a look at that task. In this task, we can see the claim document on the right hand side and the fields extracted on the left hand side. This user can go through the fields and validate that the fields were extracted correctly. And when they press submit, the robot will continue processing the email. The robot takes the human validated data and creates the claim in the CRM. Now the robot is done processing the four emails and we can see that the emails were moved into their respective folders based on intent. Now let's navigate to the CRM and see the renewals request that we created. As we refresh the page, we will see the two renewal requests that were created. Additionally, we can navigate to the claims page in the CRM to see the new claim that was created. You can see that the fields extracted from the document are added in the claim. Now that we've seen a robot process a few emails, I would like to show you how fast robots can run at scale. With serverless robots, UiPath can process millions of communications in no time. On screen, you're seeing 100 unread emails being processed by serverless robots in under a minute. Underwriters only have to deal with exceptions, and as a customer, I get my renewal policy almost immediately. Communications mining enables the automatic interpretation of communications, turning them into structured, actionable data at speed and scale. Mine, monitor, and automate every conversation to enhance efficiency productivity, and the customer experience. Automate more and extend automation into whole new business areas with the latest in AI and automation from UiPath. Thank you. So isn't it great, right? So this is uh, what uh, we, have, uh, we have discussed about the communication mining today. So I hope everyone is good. Let me go to the chart section once. So, so if, if you are having any of the doubts, so you can uh, send me a message on the LinkedIn or you can use the same thread. So whichever the thread we have it for the AI associate developer series. So you can uh, send queries on the same thread. So, or you can reach me out through the LinkedIn also. That's fine. So, yeah. Thank you, Pradeep. Yeah. Can we open for Q&A now? Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, we can open for two to three we more. We don't minutes. have that much more time, but maybe we can open uh, for live Q&A for five minutes. Uh, I, will, I will now enable the participants to uh, unmute. And yes. please uh, raise your hand if you would like to ask a question live to Pradeep or Pranav. Uh, Pradeep, one question that was very common that I have observed is, mm -hmm. like, how is the AI unit consumption here? When we are telling one email, is it one AI unit or is it something different? This is no, it's not exactly. So yeah. here in the communication mining, we are uh, doing the calculations based on the threat. 
So each thread uh, will calculate one unit on that. Okay. Yeah. It's a kind of cluster thread. So it's not based on the words or the entities. So based on the threads, it can do the calculations for that. Thank you, Pradeep. Okay, we have some questions about the video that you just played, but I suppose the link will be in the deck, no, in the final uh, PowerPoint presentation, which we will upload to the event. Um, and there are some more questions in the chat, but I would like to know whether anyone wants to ask live. So please raise your hand if you would like to intervene and ask live a question. Okay, I don't see anyone raising. Or you can just unmute yourself, but to do it in turns, not to speak one over the other, so we can uh, understand the questions. Hey, hi. Uh, may I know what, what kind of documents uh, will the comms mining uh, not work on? Uh, what kind of uh, documents means, like what you are expecting it. So basically, it's a kind of uh, data where we can uh, read yeah. the data and, yes. it, and it will give kind of clusters. So, but the thing is, uh, if you are in your uh, company, so if you are having a 90% of uh, free text regarding to that particular one cluster and 10% of uh, uh, documents are related to the, some other cluster, but then you can get some idea, right? So we have to use our communication mining for this particular 10, 90% uh, of clusters where we are getting it, but it can work for uh, all the uh, data, all the free text because it's an unsupervised learning model. Hey, I have a question. Uh, does it yeah. understand multiple languages? And if there are mixed languages within an email, uh, how does it differentiate between that data? Uh, so we have a language uh, transition. So we need to use uh, one more uh, model uh, before sending the data to here. So whichever the data will get it. So we have to do the translation. So that's a kind of uh, uh, one way we can do that. But I am not. I am sure we, they can integrate that particular uh, model. Uh, how we have integrated the NLP models like that. They can use the lang uh, language translation uh, translation also here. So if not integrated, then you can go with the uh, AA center model and you can use that model to do the translation. Okay, and if an email has multiple languages like mixed language email, right? Mm -hmm. And some words which might mean different meanings in different languages are part of that email. Is it able to identify the differences? Uh, that can be moved as a one cluster saying the different uh, mails. So then that can be handled through the action center. So okay. whichever you are getting it, that mail is having multiple languages, right? So that can be handled as a one cluster saying that uh, uh, mail which is having the multiple languages. So what can happen? The entire cluster mails, we can do the automation to move that mails to the action center. Mm -hmm. So there uh, we can do some kind of uh, things. What we can do it as automation, then we can send that uh, data back to our uh, uh, code. So that's how we can handle it as a long running workflows. Sure. Thank you. Okay, we have two more raised hands and this will be the two final questions we take because uh, I think we need uh, five minutes also to explain what will happen in the next session. Uh, Jakub, you are the first. Okay, so that was interesting question in the chat and I am wondering why it's not possible. So uh, don't you think that you can um, get the uh, recordings of the calls from the call center in some company, then make some... Uh, transcription so like uh, uh, voice recognition and then transcript it to the JSON format and then this JSON format used to communications mining then you can get sentiment of the calls and then for example compare who uh, who who is going the best the results for example in the call center which helps managers to uh, recognize the best the best uh, operators and uh, the worst scenarios also uh, that's true uh, that's a great idea even uh, that's one of the possibility we have in the communication mining uh, when you are uh, dealing with the data source or the data sets we have one of the data uh, variation that is called as a speech or text so for this particular communication mining we can uh, use the data in this way of uh, voice uh, recording way also so that can be handled here but we have not done any real-time scenario on that but we have the possibility to do that Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pradeep. That's a great answer. And yeah, it's a great opportunity also for use cases. Uh, Jose? Hi. Hello. Good afternoon. 
Thank you very much for uh, this session. I have a simple question. Uh, exists a, a manner that tests the communication meaning into the trial perversion? And in this response is not, what are the corresponding alternative to test this uh, solution with pro-trial version? Uh, sorry, can you please uh, repeat it again? Sorry for that. Okay, uh, I would like, what is the manner that tests the communication meaning in pro trial version? Uh, what is the alternative in this response is not? So if there is no response means that and basically when you are using these kind of uh, models, we have to make the human in the loop, right? So because uh, we can't believe 100% of the models, what will it get it as a response? So before getting any of the response or if you are getting the response or if you are not getting the response. So as per the uh, best practice way, we have to do the validation uh, before doing the response. Then uh, after six months of uh, six to 10, 12 months of long period, we can observe our model, how that particular model is working. So based on that, we can uh, remove which are the clusters don't require the validation. So that's the way we can go with that. But it's a kind of long running uh, uh, way. To go. Thank you very much. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I think uh, we we will uh, most probably uh, uh, close the session here. Uh, I will just uh, share a few links for you in the chat now for the upcoming session and uh, the rest of the resources, which you will also receive in the wrap up email. But just to do a quick recap, uh, I want uh, I will take the share screen now a bit from my uh, colleagues. Uh, so uh, just for you to understand, since we are, uh, yes, we are getting close. You have in the chat now the UI platform thread where you can keep asking questions. If there are any technical or session re uh, related questions, please tag your mentors for the specific session uh, where you address that question. If there are program related questions, my big ask is first, do consult the program page because most of your queries have their answers here. Uh, regarding the timeline, regarding the certification vouchers, regarding the deadlines and the verification test, all of the answers are to be found here. Uh, I think the most important detail is that next week, uh, everyone will receive an email and you will also receive the link in the session uh, for a new form, which you will have to submit, uh, stating your intention to move forward into the verification test and the certification process. Uh, because some of you may have uh, really like engaged with this uh, series uh, and went all the way for certification and might have started the Learning Plan Academy. Some of you might have attended for a specific session only. Uh, with this form, you will be able to submit your intention that you intend to complete the Learning Plan Academy, to take the verification test, and to earn the, verif the certification voucher. So this will happen on Wednesday this week. Uh, I also, uh, on forum, we gave a message to justify and apologize for the delay we had today. I apologize once again. Uh, and you will receive tomorrow morning the wrap-up email for this session with all the details for Wednesday as well. Uh, hopefully you had a great time today. Uh, thank you very much to Pranav and Pradeep who were great and uh, I bet it took a lot of energy to answer all these questions, but the session was uh, indeed incredible and very, very nice. So thank you all. Uh, you can also let us have some feedback. If you have any, you'll receive a feedback form anyway after this program. We hope you enjoyed it and we have one more session to go. Uh, okay, see you all next Wednesday. And have a great reminder of the week. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thank you.